<laughs> okay, there we go. Hello, welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. And uh, for the next hour, we're going to play around uh, basically with the idea of analogy. Uh, analogies are ways to describe things. Of course, you know in English we use adjectives descri to describe things, but we use many other uh, tools in order to describe things. Uh, of course, we can use uh, gerund phrases, we use infinitive phrases, we use relative clauses in order to fully describe things. Um, plus, of course, uh, adjective or adverb adjective combinations. English loves to describe things. And one of our tools in our toolbox of English is using analogy. Specifically, today uh, we're going to play around with um, a, a couple of forms of analogy, which are simile and metaphor. Okay. Uh, before we get into that, let me just. Uh, Meet and greet. Time to say howdy. Howdy, Heidi. Welcome to the class. Hello. Nice to see you again. Likewise, as I'm always. A little sleepy. <laughs> You're a little sleepy? Well, you're a little sleepy. So am I. <laughs> I'm with you, Heidi. <laughs> suddenly, I dis disappear. <laughs> oh, that's okay. If I suddenly disappear, it means I passed out. <laughs> well, oh, sometimes I, I no response. <laughs> Okay. Really, I'm well, thanks. in front of computer sometimes this happens. <laughs> thanks for the warning. Uh, Heidi, I swear to you guys this is totally true. I it happened a long time ago, but I swear I was chatting with a friend on just an instant message program. And I was really tired. It was really late at night. And I swear this is true. I fell asleep and my, I fell forward and put my head on the desk, on the computer desk, but my hands were on the keyboard. And I, <laughs> Heidi, when I woke up, uh, this is what my keyboard said. I'll put it in the verbling chat. Maybe uh, there are many keyboard or stumps on no, your forehead. <laughs> I, I swear, this is what my keyboard said when I woke up. Just like that. <laughs> it's so true. It's totally true. I'm not even making that story up. Absolutely true. I laugh so hard. Okay. Uh, also, <laughs> hello, Anton. Welcome to the class. Hello. Hi. Hello, Oakley. Hi. Uh, nice to have you aboard. Hello, Thank Michael. Uh, hi, Michael, again. Hi, Teacher Oakley. Hi, hi. Uh, Poom, Poom Poom is in the room. Hey, Poom, what's up? Hello, Charlie. Good to see you again. Nice. And uh, Ismail is back with us. Hello, Ismail. Hello, Oakley. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Antonio, for sure. The the keyboard was reading my mind. It was uh. <laughs> it's really it was funny. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, two forms of analogy. If you you know if you take courses in the English in university, you're gonna learn about uh, um, you know oh my goodness a million different kinds of very specific types of metaphor and blah blah blah. We're not in uh, third year university English here, so we're not gonna get that into it. Let's talk a little bit about uh, simile and um, metaphor. I, <clears throat> I'm going to do a little screen share here just so you can read this as I'm explaining. What is the difference, simile and metaphor? Okay, both are analogies, okay? Uh, two forms are simile and metaphor. A simile is where two things are compared, okay? You're comparing two things. We'll get into this a little more uh, exactly how we do it in just a second while uh, a metaphor is where unlike things have something in common so two things that are not alike but you're trying to stress the one thing they have in common so okay what does that mean uh, a simile two things are compared 
a very basic form of a simile um, is like this. All right. As blank as uh, whatever. Could be uh, a noun, could be a phrase. Uh, as blank, and the blank here is usually an adjective. So you're trying to stress this adjective. You're trying to highlight it and make a paint a picture. You're describing it. So you're painting a picture of this. What, what actual thing can you imagine in your brain which illustrates this adjective? So uh, this is a, a very normal simile. Also, when we compare two things, which have uh, two things like, um, okay, for example, a heart is like an engine. That's that's another type of a simile. Okay, because they have similar attributes, they have similar functions, whatever. They could have many different similarities. Metaphor is a bit tricky. We'll get into that in a little bit. But where two things are unlike, um, for example, his heart is a stone. All right. A stone and a heart. Uh, okay, his heart is like an engine. Okay, there's, they're very similar in several ways. In function and the way they work, they actually pump fluid. Okay, his heart is a stone. Notice I don't use like. Uh, with a metaphor, I'm actually saying it is a stone. These are two obviously, one is animate, one is inanimate. Obviously completely different things, but they have something in common. They're, I can describe a heart as being very hard, uh, meaning unkind, unforgiving. Uh, a stone clearly is very hard, obviously. If you've ever been hit in the head with a rock, you know I'm speaking the truth. Uh, okay, let's let's get to playing with uh, some of these things. All right, this form as adjective as whatever. Uh, no, okay. Um, here's an interesting thing about similes, and we're gonna try forming our own. We're gonna have some fun here. Um, similes can kind of be categorized in two ways. This is my own idea, really. All right. Uh, some similes are so repeated, so well known, so popular, so common, they become idiomatic. They become idiomatic expressions. For example, uh, the expression, you're as stubborn as a mule. Uh, most English speakers know this. This is a very common expression. Uh, convey the fact that you are being very stubborn. You're, in other words, you're emphasizing this adjective. You're illustrating this adjective. Uh, even exaggerating it. A mule is an animal which is known to be extremely stubborn. Uh, when I see this phrase, it paints a picture in my mind of, uh, of a man pulling on the reins, trying to get the mule to to move and the mule's legs are locked very stiffly and he won't move at all. That's the idea. You're, tr you're trying to paint a picture. Um, okay, so back to my original idea. Some similes like this, This I would consider this to be an idiom. All right, it, it fits. Now, on the other hand, you can create your own similes. There's no reason you can't. You can say any gosh darn thing you want to, um, as you know, creatively, humorously, sarcastically, as you feel like, and uh, that is actually, um, frankly, it's considered to be quite witty, quite funny, uh, funny and smart, witty. Um, you know, if you can make up your own similes kind of on the fly, on the spur of the moment, that's quite impressive. And uh, so another kind of, you can create your own similes that you don't have to use idiomatic similes. So there's nothing wrong with that. And we're going to, we're, maybe, maybe we'll do a little bit of that during the class. You guys will have your own chance to 
create your own similes. Who knows? Maybe the 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 uh, maybe this will go absolutely viral in YouTube, and you will create an idiom. Who knows? Hey, it could happen. All right, uh, another example. He's as blind as a bat. All right, there you go. Meaning he doesn't see very well. Again, very, very idiomatic. It doesn't matter. Now, keep, please keep that in mind. It doesn't matter. If, we, if we're going to do an exercise, for example, and I'm going to have you fill in the blank with possible idioms. What, po no, I'm sorry, with possible phrases, okay, to illustrate the adjective, all right, which we're going to try. Don't be shy. Be as creative, crazy, funny as you want to be. You may be able to think of idiomatic answers or feel free to create your own. Um, that's fine. It, similes can be extremely personal to the situation. For example, um, uh, if I say, oh, the, uh, okay, the night is as black as Michael's heart. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Michael. What did you say? Wait, oh. <laughs> The, what night, is, uh, the night is as black as Michael's heart. Oh, that implies that I am very, very bad or something. Yes, right? it does, and I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. okay. The sun well, is we have uh, another idiom, right. like, in, my language. Me... in every joke, we, it's a little of a joke. Have you ever heard? Uh, okay, all right, but I was going to turn it around. I was going to say uh, the sun was as bright as, as Michael's mind. So there you go. You can go the other way on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thank you for being a good sport. All right. So in other words, I, it's, very, it's very common to create a simile which is peculiar or specific to a situation. You know, here's Michael in the class. It's perfectly all right and normal to do so. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Let's take a look. For example, um, uh, for example, uh, similes don't have to have one answer. There is not a one correct answer, and that's really what I'm trying to emphasize. All right, taking a look here. Uh, sweet. To emphasize the word sweet, really, we should have as sweet. Uh, we should have the word as before these, but. Okay, should have edited that before class. All right, uh, as sweet as the last smile of sunset. Ooh, deeply poetic there. All right. Uh, okay. I, now this is not really an idiom. I've never heard this before. Um, just very poetic and creative. As sweet as the twilight no notes of the thrush. Toot 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 toot. <laughs> right. Okay. As sweet as the infant spring. All right. As sweet as a cat with syrup in its paws. Ooh, a little bit humorous. Okay. As sweet as the morning dew upon a rose. As sweet as summer showers. Well, look at these examples. These are all very creative, poetic, uh, songwriter, maybe lyrics, sort of uh, simile creations. Uh, let's see what we can do. As sweet as, oh my goodness, what do you think? Uh, Heidi, what do you think? As sweet as what? Sweet as, uh -huh. um, oh, sweet as, uh, yeah. What can you come up with? What illustrates sweet? Baby. Uh, a father. Sweet as a father who are uh, looking at uh, his uh, daughter. Oh, that is very nice. As I have a daughter, I, I can relate to this one. Very sweet, right? <laughs> yeah, very sweet. I like that. Oh, you know what? You get a great big, oh for that one. I like that. Very nice, Heidi. 
Excellent. Uh, Antonio, what do you think? Can you come up with one? Uh, street uh, light as uh, the gentle breeze of the morning. Oh, well, Antonio have a has a poet's soul, I think. Uh, oh, very nice. Okay, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. You ever write poetry, Antonio? <laughs> I try sometimes when I was I, young. <laughs> hey, hey, I got one for you guys. You notice how my um, space bar keeps sticking? Uh, I keep having to put the space between words. That's because uh, it's as sweet as the syrup I spilled on my keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not actually kidding. Michael, what do you think? Sweet as money. No. As sweet as money? <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. No, okay. Um, I will tell you, but you formulate in a proper way. Sweet as uh, lips or uh, Ooh. for a woman, something like that. Oh, okay. Uh, that would be the lips of a woman. Ooh, we we have a lot of poets in the room. Very nice. I like sweet as money, though. I really do. <laughs> now, you see, as, as, buck. as buck. sweet. Okay, as sweet as money. Maybe you would say that in a situation where you're trying to be sarcastic, you know. But that would be very funny in such a situation. So I have. I, I don't really want to deride that answer. I actually think that's a very funny and witty answer, um, depending on the circumstances. Better to sound, uh, sounding better is sweet as a million dollar. Yeah. Okay. That sounds better. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Poom. What do you think? Um, as sweet as sweet as a way, um, it it makes me think of love. <laughs> as sweet as my love. Sweet as what? My love. As sweet as my love. Uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to take your word for it on that one, of course. <laughs> beat us. us. Why? Pum beat us. Uh, he he beat. Okay, the the past is beat as well. Yeah, beat oh, okay. beat beaten. Uh, okay. Has beat us. He, yesterday he beat the dog. Yeah. Yep. It's beat beat beaten is the past participle. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, not yet because Ismail has a chance, and I I know Ismail's a it's a poet. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, okay. Wow. Ismail's got a couple one. I like. Okay, I I don't know if you can. I just have to put that one up here because whoops, sweat. It's sweat. <laughs> it's sweaty. <laughs> Ooh, sweaty as a baby's hand. <laughs> believe me, if you ever shake hands with my daughter, you you believe this one, okay? <laughs> no, I just misprinted there, but still funny. Okay, sweet as a baby's hand. That's fine. Uh, okay, Raphael, are you, are you here? Are you in? Can you say hello, Raphael? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Uh, okay. Hi, 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 Raphael. Okay, uh, Raphael, can you can you give us an example as sweet as sweet as uh, honey? <laughs> sweet as what? Uh, honey. As sweet as honey. honey. Okay. <laughs> um, now, 
And <laughs> finally, the last one I hear as sweet as honey. Now you know what this is very idiomatic. This is a this is actually a common phrase. Um, you know what I, I I have to alter Ismail's. I'm sorry, Ismail. Yours was much better than the way I wrote it. Actually, uh, but one one thing, Ismail, I would correct. It would be as sweet as the tiny hand of a baby, which is very nice indeed. Uh, you need the article the. This is very, very specific information. But thank you for that, Ismail. Yes. I hope you don't mind. I just no, no. copied it and wrote it. Okay, I, I have one more that I just thought of, but I think it's, I like it. Sweet as a bee's butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as sweet as a bee's butt. Ow! Yeah, you, you know butt, right? The, the rear end of a bee. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of that. I think it's kind of cute. Um, that just came to me. Uh, uh, let's try some more. Let's see how we do these on the fly. All right. Uh, kind of fun. Let, let's, uh, Anton. Why don't you try this, this one here? My my man's yeah. cookies are dry as an empty glass of wine. <laughs> oh, wow! Okay, that's <laughs> the empty glass of wine. Oh, wow! That's like a suddenly it's a tragedy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Well, that's a good one. I bet we can come up. We can all come up with one for dry. Uh, uh, Michael, can you think of another one for dry? My mom's cookies are dry. Dry as. Do you want something mean? To say something mean about you? Hope me? No. <laughs> about me? Yeah. No, yeah. sure. I don't care. No. no okay. I'll not say. No. No. Okay. I don't really. <laughs> No, okay. Dry as a, what could be very dry? Dry as a as a um, uh, what? Uh, so uh, summer, yeah. So as uh, as uh, sun, uh, summer sun, yeah. That's a summer sun. Okay. Yep. Okay. I guess this sun's probably pretty dry. <laughs> you know, the fun thing here is, you know, dry has many meanings. Um, many meanings, actually, and you could illustrate. Okay, you're you're actually talking about the physical properties of your mom's cooking, but as the comparison and the simile, you can use any of the many meanings of dry. Do you know another meaning of dry, Michael? Mm, like uh, not enough? Uh, okay. uh, yeah, but usually that's a phrasal verb, dried up normally. Boring? Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. But, sorry? A boring? Something is boring? Boring? Yes, very good. Okay. So, uh, excellent. Yeah, it could be boring. Um, it could mean dry as in lack of moisture, which is physical. Yes, dry can be boring. Does anybody else know another meaning of dry? Almost of friendly. Or... Uh, no, well, kind of. We often describe humor as he has a dry sense of humor which is kind of like not friendly. It means yeah. that someone with a dry sense of humor says something funny but doesn't react at all. Or uh, someone with a dry sense of humor, uh, yeah, well, they don't react to people having fun, people being friendly. So it's very close to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so any of those meanings... Um, we also use dry, of course, to discuss the weather. Rainy, it's dry. Uh, Antonio, 
Antonio of the dry glass of wine. Do you know another meaning of dry? Uh, hint, hint, wine, wine, hint, hint. Yeah, I, I said uh, about boring. Uh, it, another one could be... Uh, something that is related with cookies, for example. Uh, <laughs> uh, one is without butter. Uh, okay, all right. That you're getting away from what I'm what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how we can use a comparative statement to fill in the blank with any meaning of dry. Uh, what I was fishing for I was I was fishing Antonio we can describe wine as dry a dry wine is a wine that, yeah, yeah. Uh, right it has to has the gene yeah okay it um, a dry wine is well how do you describe that dry as a wine I know what it Taste yeah, like. sharp. It's sharp. It's uh, oh, okay. a sharp taste. It's uh, okay. Uh, a cutting taste. It's something like that. Oh, you're better than I am. Okay, cutting taste. That's good. That's really good. Okay, very good. Uh, all right. So there's, in other words, what I'm trying to illustrate is there are many ways we use dry, and in a simile, uh, using that is in the descriptive phrase any of those would work. That's the idea I'm trying to get across. Comparing them to any of the many meanings of dry would would uh, would be great. Would work just fine. Poom, can you think of one? Yeah. I'm also interested to see if anybody comes up with an idiomatic like it took forever to get to sweet as honey. Um, there, there are a couple, two or three idiomatic expressions as dry as. Um, cookies are as dry as a melted ice cream. <laughs> a melted ice cream? <laughs> Boom. Uh, okay, I'm not sure about that one, Poom. If you wanted to say as sticky as a melted ice cream, I'd buy that. Yeah, I don't know if melted ice cream is the first thing I think of when I think of dry. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Uh, okay. Uh, Ismail, what do you got? My mom's cookies are as dry as a stone. As a... As a... Stone? As a stone. <laughs> okay. As a stone. Or right. as a... As dry as Gobi di dessert. All right. Uh, and then that is a specific place. Uh, so again, Ismail, I would urge you to use the article the, as dry as the Gobi Desert, because we know exactly which desert. Yeah, as dry as the desert is, a, or even the Gobi Desert is, a, is definitely idiomatic. Okay. That would be a common thing to say. Uh, okay. Very good. As dry as a stone. Mm -hmm. You don't like stone, Oakley? Stone? I do like stone, actually. I do. <laughs> no, 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 no. I do like it. I actually like that one. That makes sense to me. Uh, definitely. Raphael, can you come up with one here? My mom's cookies are as dry as... Um, my mom's cookies are dry as my boss. <laughs> as dry as what? As my boss. Your boss? I yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Oh, meaning your boss, implying that your boss is boring. Yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> All right. Now, of course, in this circumstance, Raphael, we would have to understand your boss. We would have to understand the reference. Sure. But okay, that still that works if we understand the reference. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Her skin. What? Her skin. Her skin? Yeah. <laughs> Ew. That's all I can say to that one. Ew. As dry as her skin. Okay. That's actually kind of funny. If, of, of 
course, implying that your mom has a very dry, flaky, yucky skin. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's an unappetizing idea. All right. But, okay, it works. Uh, hi, Ken. Yes, hello. Hello, Ken. How are you? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, Ken, we're playing around with similes. We're mm -hmm. having a little fun. We're uh, creating some similes. Uh, where we're exaggerating an, an adjective. Mm -hmm. um, so what have, what have we had here? Uh, we take in turns doing this exercise. My mom's cookies are as dry as an empty glass of wine. I like that. As dry mm -hmm. as a stone. Uh, as dry as the sun, I think. Can you come up with one? Uh, I, I saw the uh, sun, but uh, you said sun. So my mom's cookies are as dry as uh, her dry as uh, what else? Uh, I, I cannot think. Anything. I, as I, dry as your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what. <laughs> as dry as my brain. Okay, mom's cookies are as dry as Ken's brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, I go back to what Michael said. You know, you would probably use the phrasal verb as dried up, meaning all used up. Okay. Sorry, Ken. It was just, it was there, you know. <laughs> there it was. Uh, too easy. Uh, in which case, okay, dried up, which still conveys the same meaning, and all right, uh, so, yeah, okay, I can see how you could use that, Michael, actually. Um, definitely. Uh, an idiomatic answer here uh, is actually as dry as a stone. I think I've heard that before, so maybe that one is dry as a desert, definitely. A common one uh, is as dry as dust is... Uh, common expression. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, okay, we'll, we'll go around, we'll, we'll try these. Each person will get a different one now. Let's, let's try that out. Uh, Michael? It's uh, cold, it, oh, sorry, it's as cold as outside today. It's as cold as as in uh, as in Siberia. Ah, good one. Okay, it's <laughs> cold as Siberia outside today. Uh, okay, we're gonna move along. Everyone's gonna try a different one. But can anyone think of another creative answer? It's as cold as I'll, I'll throw it open to the class for a few seconds. Ice cream factory. Ooh, good one. Uh, it's as cold as an ice cream factory. I see. I like that. The extra detail. All right. Very good. Hey Heidi, have you ever been to an ice cream factory? No. <laughs> I have, and you're right. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream factories are fun places to visit. By the way, when everybody, when anybody has a chance, really go. You get free ice cream. It's terrific. Nothing beats that. Uh, okay, I Ismail, you have one? As cold as a winter day at Paul. Okay. Uh, as cold as an ice cube. As cold as an ice cube. Okay, that's, that's quite common. Um, let's see, all right. Uh, as cold as uh, Mrs. Claus on Valentine's Day. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, as cold as Pluto, for example. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Can think of any good ones? It's cold as an iceberg in your crotch outside today. It's cold as an ice cube. What in your crotch? <laughs> in your crotch. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's cold. Okay. All right, that'd work. All right. Okay. Oh, let's move on. Let's try some other ones. Poom. 
ho-hum, this glass is as dull as... As dull as... Um... Mm. Mm. <laughs> I have no idea. Has no idea. <laughs> All right, let's. That's my brain. That's your brain. Okay, and that actually works. Uh, that's actually. What is dull? What is dull? Well, that's okay. What I was just gonna say. Dull can mean many things. Um, it can be the opposite of bright. Okay, dull means boring. In this, probably the class is boring. So dull can mean boring. Dull can be the opposite of bright. Uh, the light was very dull. All right, dim, dull, uh, synonyms. Uh, it can also mean not smart. The same as bright can mean smart. Dull can mean, well, let's face it, stupid. Uh, okay. It can also mean, uh, just like sharp can mean smart, and dull can mean stupid. Dull can also mean like a knife is dull. It's blunt. It is, again, opposite of sharp. A pencil. My pencil in my hand. Okay, this class is as dull as my pencil. It's basically worn down, and I need to. I can't find my pencil sharpener. So there you go. All right, so dull, again, like dry, another adjective with multiple meanings. Um, and it is perfectly normal to say, oh, my brain feels dull today. Uh, I don't, meaning I don't feel sharp. So, uh, so Poom's answer was not that bad, actually. Uh, okay, uh, anybody else? Think of one for dull. Well, um, this class is uh, dull as a documentary movie. <laughs> as a documentary <laughs> movie, okay. Well, you know, even take it a step further. What is who is somebody who's would really really boring to watch a documentary movie? A documentary <laughs> movie about making socks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of. I amuse myself. Okay. Uh, all right. Can anybody think of another one? Uh, this class is a jewel as uh, offshore uh, offshore banquet. As a what banquet? Offshore banquet. What? An uh, offshore I mean, you know, kind banquet? of. For example, if Obama come and uh, you know. Oh. He, yeah, he was welcome to the kind of uh, banquet. Uh, yeah. In the okay. Or something like that. So. It could be boring. I got it. As an official <laughs> banquet. All right. Yeah, those things are dull, unless, of course... I remember George Bush, uh, when he went to Japan, he had some sushi, and then he threw up. So that added a little excitement. <laughs> <laughs> he was a pop news, actually, at that time. On the TV. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Probably the uh, jet lag and travel and hard schedule yeah, might influence to the, uh, his condition. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't have to make excuses for him. Believe me, I'm an American and I refuse to do that. It's okay. Okay, it's dull as an unsharpened pencil. Okay, um, an idiomatic answer is uh, this class is as dull as dishwater. All right. Dishwater. Dish Very strange answer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea how this managed to become popular enough to be an idiom. I but thought, I thought church. A church. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good answer. Yeah, many people consider church to be pretty dull. As dull as church. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> as an Angela Merkel speech. Uh, as a what speech? Oh, Merkel speech? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That, that is a good one. Oh, my goodness. 
okay. Very good. Okay. There you go. Uh, Antonio bringing in references, references to current events, references to, okay, his background, European, Euro European politics, whatever. Okay. That's actually very witty and very funny. Uh, I like that a lot. That, that's, that's good. Obviously, it's not going to be idiomatic. You know, it's going to not going to be the commonly spoken thing, but it's very witty. It's funny. All right, let's uh, try the next one here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ismail, his head is as big as a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. His head is as big as an elephant. As an elephant. That's a very big head. <laughs> okay. Can anyone else think of uh, another idea? His head is as big as a... Uh, no. is, uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, to go ahead, Ken. Uh, okay, his head is as big as a uh, marshmallow man. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> as big as what? Marshmallow, marshmallow man in Ghostbusters. Marshmallow man <laughs> from Ghostbusters. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. His, I get his it. His head is as big as my mother-in-law ass. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's my mother-in-law's ass. Oh my goodness. Antonio, you're a little too good at this game. <laughs> okay, that, that's a good one. Oh, very good. All right. Uh, anybody else? His head is as big as a. All right. Now, what does that mean? Is somebody's head is big? If somebody has a big head. This is a common co-location. All right. Actually, let's make this clear. If somebody has a big head, what does that mean? Persistent person. What? Uh, persistent person. Smart. Persistent. Uh, okay. This is interesting. Persistent? Mm, I don't know. Not so much. Smart? Possibly. Somebody um, sometimes, more or less idiomatically, <laughs> refer to someone, oh, he's got a giant brain. But usually, when we say somebody has a big head, it means something different. Usually, we say he has a big brain. It means he's smart. Possibly, Michael, though. It, it could be interpreted that way. Uh, besides the fact that his head is physically large, <laughs> his head which, is busy, maybe. Sorry, he had a lot of problem. His head is busy, maybe. Um. Okay. Maybe you you guys are kind of swimming around the edge of possibility here. Uh, uh, useless. Useless. <laughs> Big and empty. Okay. Uh, <laughs> useless. Okay. Uh, you guys are swimming around the edges here. I don't know. Just, okay, the co location, so he has a big head. If I just say he has a big head, I probably, I either mean his head is large in dimensions, or I mean he's very egotistical. All right. He's in love with himself. He's narcissistic. He's an egotist. Uh, somebody has a big head. They're they're very proud of them. Overly proud. Okay, that would be the normally accepted connotation from that co-location of words. He's got a big head. But yeah, here he, okay. His head is big as. Uh, a normal idiomatic answer, his head is as big as a melon. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've heard that before. I've also heard his head is as big as a bowling ball. But <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why a bowling ball is that big. Um, another funny one I've heard is one of my favorite similes I just have to share because I just thought of it before the class is over. Um, okay, I'll type it in verbling. And I, I want to see if you guys 
do you, do you know what I mean? Oh, I want to illustrate a point, too. Um, he is as sharp as a bowling ball. What? <laughs> okay. If I say he's as sharp as a bowling ball, <laughs> what do I mean by that? Right. What am I actually saying? What's that, Ken? Slippery. Slippery? Um, no, no. No, no, no. The opposite. The opposite is not sharp. Because That's right. Only... <laughs> the bowling ball has no sharp points whatsoever. So the bowling ball is the very antithesis of sharp. You could never cut someone with a bowling ball. But when I describe a person as sharp, I mean he's intelligent and smart. So if I say he's as sharp as a bowling ball, basically I'm saying he's really stupid. Yes. He's as sharp as a bowling ball. Amazing. Okay. This is a use of a simile in a very, very ironic and sarcastic, deeply sarcastic way. Okay. Uh, but fun. <laughs> yeah. But ever so much fun. If uh, that happened in a uh, movie or something, I couldn't understand it. it was, you know, since I'm joking, yeah. uh, in foreign language, it's pretty tricky. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Because of the duality of meanings, like we talked about with dry and dull and big and sharp, they have, they have th two, three, f even four different meanings, and you're mixing up meanings in the context of the sentence. Mm -hmm. And this is very common to do with similes, to play around with a totally different meaning to illustrate something else, which is not even synonymous. All right. Uh, okay. Ooh, okay, let's try this one. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Raphael. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about this one? My sister's new dress is as ugly as... Uh, my sister's new dress is as ugly um, as the Walking Dead series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch! Ooh, good one. Uh, as ugly as the Walking Dead series. All right. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anybody else uh, have an idea? <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. Is as ugly as. Uh, all right. The the idiomatic answer here. Uh, is as ugly as sin, S-I-N, as ugly as sin. Uh, okay, very standard idiom. Uh, okay, let's try the next one. Uh, why do I keep doing that? Ken, I was as nervous as... I was uh, as nervous as... Uh, I was as nervous as uh, performers on the stage. Mm, okay. Now that that is more like a direct comparison. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it really a simile? I'm not sure because you're you're comparing things that are very very much alike. Oh, okay. You're more like an example. You're giving me an example of, of nervous. Example. All right. Not uh, think. Well, I guess I. All right. I guess it's a, it's okay. I guess that's really what simile is. It's kind of an example. All right. But that's a very direct example. Okay. I. It, it's okay. It's okay. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, does anybody else have any ideas? As the first, yes. As the yes. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hang on, Ishmael. Uh, Heidi, go ahead. As Ladies first. In front of a snake. As a what in front of a snake? As a frog. Frog. Oh, it was as nervous as a frog in front of a snake. Very good. All right. Okay, illustrating the situation. Nice. Uh, Ismail? I was as nervous as a dog 
whose food was taken from his mouth. Okay. As nervous as a dog whose food was taken from his mouth. Let me share with you guys. Uh, oh, you have another one? Yeah, and a skydiver without parachute. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Did you just make that up? That's a that's a good one. I like that. As nervous as a skydiver without a parachute. Did you make that up or did you look that up? That's good. I like that. Uh, I'll give you a couple of idiomatic ones. These are real. Okay. As nervous as a three-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> There's a nice long one for you. As nervous as a three-tailed cat, a cat with three tails in a room full of rocking chairs. Those are the chairs with the rails on the bottom that go up and down and up and down. All right, if you can imagine. Uh, okay, another one is as nervous as a prostitute in church. Except, of course, you might say it a different way. Or uh, sweating like a prostitute in church is a common idiom. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Lots of similes about colors. As blue as, as red as, as yellow as, as white as, as black as. Uh, what do you think, Ken? Uh, oh, no, Ken, you had the last one there. Okay. We'll go back to Ant Anton. Antonio. The inside yeah. of the room was as black as. Ooh, let's go to the last one because we've only got a couple minutes. Antonio, how about this last one? My uncle is as crazy as. As crazy as. Uh... As a man who won the lottery. As a man who won the lottery. <laughs> okay, I give you that. Uh, can anybody think of any uh, other ones for crazy? Uh, the standard idiom. This may sound weird. As crazy as a bed bug. Believe it or not, as crazy as a bed bug is. Probably the most well-known idiomatic. What is bed expression. bug? Bed bug? I don't even know. Actually, okay. <laughs> maybe bug in the bed. Yeah, some okay. kind. Of, I I don't can I don't really know if I don't even know if this is a real thing. Um, I I know it is a real thing, but I don't really know what it is. If they're just, I'm not sure if they're talking about. Like the tiny bugs that are on our skin all the time, or if they're talking about a specific kind of bug, I don't really know. Crazy is a bed bug. Uh, okay. Or uh, as crazy as a loon. Do you know what a loon is? No. No. Uh, well, I, I I actually love this. I used to go canoeing quite a bit just to see these animals. They're very, very beautiful. A loon is kind of like, it's a kind of duck, but it's more graceful, more like a swan, a little bit longer neck. It's black and white. It is very beautiful. You should check it out on YouTube or something because the most alarming thing, well, there's two alarming things. One is their call which is very plaintive and haunting and very beautiful. Really something to hear in the more northern areas. They're very northern birds. Uh, at sunset, they tend to call. And they're very, very, very... If you've never heard it, you might freak out. It's kind of spooky sound. Uh, they have a couple calls, one kind of spooky, one that sounds like a, a hysterical madman laughing. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of it actually scares the crap out of you if you're out in the if you're camping outside or something it's actually very scary 
and it's very loud. Um, and the other weird thing is their eyes are bright red. I mean, bright red. Freaky. They look like devil eyes. Uh, like rabbits. Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. But they're freaky, and their their eyes are very reflective. You can see them at night. Anyway, really cool animals. As crazy as a loon, which by itself is actually interesting, uh, because a loon can mean this bird. A loon can also mean a crazy person, from the word loony, which is der derived from Luna, the moon. Um, people used to think that the moon had a strong influence on people and could make you actually crazy, mental. All right, we spent a lot of time playing with uh, similes here. Now we've only got like two minutes. Uh, let me briefly just talk about metaphors. Uh, metaphors were two unlike things are compared but have something in common. The way metaphors are stated, it sounds like you're stating a fact, usually. Um, so it's often you have to kind of think about it to get the idea. The, the whole, you are the wind beneath my wings, basically, is a metaphor. Obviously, a person is not wind. Um, metaphors can be humorous. They can be just really strange comparisons. They can be very simple. Phrases like "don't be an airhead." All right. Uh, obviously, a person cannot have a head full of air. Uh, they can be in idioms. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, they can be exaggerations. I'll die of embarrassment. Like, clearly, you, no one has ever died of embarrassment. Um, a new player is green. Okay, we we use that idea. The connotation, okay, can be a connotation of a word, like green, can mean somebody who's new at something. Uh, okay, so often you see metaphor used in the idiomatic expressions. He's a diamond in the rough. This, this gets a lot closer to it. Uh, it can be, metaphor can involve the verb bursting with flavor. All right, you might have heard in advertisements. Okay, it's not literally going to blow up or burst. Right, so basically metaphors are used in a lot of idiomatic expressions or exaggerated expressions. You hear metaphor used in advertising a lot to, uh, again, sort of exaggerate the adjectives, the qualities of something. Uh, okay, maybe you have to have a separate class about metaphor one of these days, but... Uh, Sorry to say, that was a lot of fun, but I have to go. I have a one-on-one -on -one class to get to, so bye-bye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, see you guys Bye. again real soon.